So I just wanted to go over uh, how I plan out my bicycle routes and also how I uh, navigate. Uh, I pretty much use Google Maps to plan it all out. So I'm just going to open that up. I'm thinking of doing something down in Utah, so I'll just go over the process of how I build it. So I want to create a new map. Go down to your places, maps, create a map. I like to leave this tab open. Uh, you can open this little images tab at the bottom. Sometimes that'll show you where cool stuff is located. Uh, I think I'm in color. Where am I? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I'll just point out all this. Uh, Neat little spots. Oh, that looks nice. Where is that? That would be in Dead Horse State Park. Cool. Um, it also helps to turn on the bicycling option there. Sometimes it'll show you the safest routes or where the bike paths are. Um, what else is here? Terrain mode. This might show you where the cool switchback roads are that go up the sides of mountains. Those are fun. But my internet is just really slow here. Welcome to rural Ontario. This is what we have to deal with. Okay, so I'm going to turn terrain mode off because that just sucks down the bandwidth oh come on so I'd like to ride through the canyon lands do the white rim uh, I'd probably go Green River canyon lands Moab and I'd like to do the Coco Pelly Trail over to Grand Junction. Uh, so basically, we're going to need food. We'll start with grocery stores. We'll mark those off. I don't like searching in here because it, uh, it automatically will mark it on your map. I don't know why it does that, but I don't want that. I find it's easier just to search in here. Grocery stores. There we go. So we got the Melon Vine store up in Green River on the west side. And in Moab. We've got the village market, it looks like. What's this one? City market, okay. So I'm in Green River, let's mark off the melon vine. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Change the icon so we know what it is. Grocery store, okay. Let's go on the lab. Come on, internet, you can do it. Okay, we've got the city market. Mark that off. Just saves time later when I'm actually there. I don't have to search around. I know exactly where it's going to be. Um, libraries, they're helpful too. I think it's up here. Yeah, there it is. 
You can go in there, charge up your phone. They usually have a water fountain. Uh, sometimes ballparks or these city parks, it's a good place. Sometimes they'll have uh, electrical sockets or water fountains too, but uh, I'm not going to mark those off right now. Okay, so I, I'm going to add another layer. I've got one layer for the labels and another for the route. Um, I'm just going to start roughing it in here. So we're going to have to go up to 191 to catch the 279. Uh, I don't like riding on highways, but uh, right here it's unavoidable. It's possible to uh, check them, these main roads. Oh, it actually looks like there's a bike path here. But uh, what I'm saying is uh, on these highways, you can usually check the street view. And there is a wide shoulder here, so that'll be safe for a bicycle. And the 279, I think that's actually pretty narrow, but uh, the traffic isn't too heavy on that one. It would be nice to go up here on the uh, Golden Spike Safari route, but uh, I have to go way, way, way out here to catch it. I don't think there's any way to get on that. Sometimes uh, you switch to satellite view. I think there's actually a huge cliff there, so I don't think you're going to be able to get up over that. But yeah, if you switch to satellite view, sometimes it'll show uh, roads that aren't labeled. But I don't think there's going to be any way to get to that. So I'm just going to follow 279 out to uh, it looks like there's some kind of it could be some kind of refinery or mining operation. I don't know if it'd be possible to bike through there or not. It is labeled 142 the potash pond. I don't know maybe you'd be able to get through there. I'm not too sure. Anyways, we'll deal with that later. So I'm just going to start roughing in the route that I want to take. I'll just put down some markers. So we're going to come up here. We're going to follow 279 all the way around. Take the... I don't know. I'll take the Long Canyon Road. That's a nice road. You can see the switchbacks on it. I mean, it's got to be cool, right? And we're going to come up here. Probably all right to take the 313. I mean, there's some back roads, but who cares? It's it's not a big deal. We're gonna hop on the white rim. You see, it starts there and comes all the way down around. Do 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 do. You can see how the white rim, it kind of goes close to the Green River here, but uh, I don't, it's not a good source for water. I mean, it's so saturated with silt. It's really hard to filter that stuff. So I wouldn't try to depend on that water for drinking. So the white rim comes up here. I don't, there's no, it's all cliffs. There's no connection here. So you got to come out this way. We're going to have to ride on the 313 for a wee bit. I've already checked the street view of that. It's got a nice wide shoulder. I mean, you could avoid it, but this is just a, a mess of roads here. Who knows what this is? So we're going to come up on a 313 for a, a little bit. We'll take the Hajo 
Canyon Safari route. Um, actually, we'll take this one. You could probably check the satellite view on this. It's pretty sketchy that these will actually exist or not. Well, it's named. That's a good sign. I think there's also a little uh, recreation area up here. Yeah, up here. It's a good sign that there's roads and it's public. That's a good sign. So I'll take this uh, crystal geyser to 335. Go up past these uh, dunes. Um, sometimes you can cross-reference Google Maps with uh, OpenStreetMap. So I believe that's the dune. What is that called? Oh, where am I? The white wash sand dune recreation site. Yeah. Okay, so we can see that on here. And uh, all these roads, they're not showing up in OpenStreetMap. So that could be a bad sign. You could try to check satellite view. It looks like there's uh, some tire tire prints going across here, <laughs> but uh, you don't want to bring your road bike out here. That's for sure. This fat bike territory. Um, also, there's Zoom Earth. Sometimes uh, the satellite view on Google Maps might be a bit blurry. So you can cross-reference with this. Sometimes this one will have better imagery. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's see if we can get, find where we were. I think we were up in... Oh, come on. Yeah, so we're up in here, you get the point. You can just search around and see if there's any actual trail to follow. It just saves you the pain later on of hitting a dead end. That's never fun. I noticed, I noticed there's something up here. Utah Launch Complex, that's not a good sign. Switch back to uh, the map view here. So the launch complex. We've got a missile base road that might be private property. It might be gated off. Um, I don't know. I think the crystal geyser. Try, well, we'll try for that one. We don't want to come all this way to hit a dead end. That would not be good. But uh, this is a popular Jeep area. I mean, if you searched around on Google, you'd probably find some information on Jeep routes through here. But uh, for the sake of this video, we'll pretend like it's a through road. And now I have the basic outline of my route. And what I'm going to do is draw a line. Just connect the dots. This doesn't have to be perfect by any means. You'll see what, why later on. So we're just going to quickly rough this in. So 
So it's going to come down to 279. Just a real rough idea of where we're going to be going. You don't have to get every little switch back and every little turn. It's just, just a rough idea. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we're going to come up here. This is a little bit tedious, not going to lie, <laughs> but uh, usually I'll do this a couple hours after work, just build on it every night. I don't think I could stand doing this for 10 hours straight. My first couple tours, I didn't do any planning, I just took an airplane to the location and started riding and just day by day I'd stop at a library or McDonald's and get some Wi-Fi and decide where I'd go but uh, I was missing out on a lot of things I'd be riding and I'd look back, oh shit, I just missed this. Too late now, not going back. This kind of helps. The best potential bicycle tour they can have. And it's so easy. Once you get out there, you just have to follow a line. And you know immediately the distances between uh, resupplying. That's good to have when you're out in the desert. Or you're up in Alaska and you need to know when you'll be able to find the next grocery store. Okay, so we're almost done the white rim here. These are pretty rough roads. I mean, if you can do, I think I did the white rim in two days. If you can do, I don't know, 80 kilometers in a day, you're doing pretty good out here. And you gotta carry all that water, it just makes it even harder. A couple different choices of roads here, but uh, something we can worry about later. I mean, once you get out there, there's usually a route that people tend to favor. Maybe there'll be road signs or whatever to whitewash sand dunes recreation area. I mean, that'd probably be the safest way to take. And these, these roads that are here, I don't trust them. We might have to end up going this way, but I'm just going to mark it straight through here anyways. Who knows what these are. Okay, we are at Green River. Oh, 
what did it say? So uh, 260 kilometers. We'll have to Green River. It could be closer to 280 kilometers because our line doesn't follow all the little curves and everything in the road. I'm just going to delete off all these markers. We don't need those anymore. All right. So from Moab to uh, Grand Junction, we want to take the Coco Pelle Trail. And uh, that's something. It's a well-known trail, I think. Lots of people have ridden it. So let's see if we can find it. And there it is, Coco Pelle Trail. Oh yeah, beautiful. Look at that. Oh uh, yeah, looks awesome, right? A lot of single track. Man, that's gonna be tough carrying all that water. I'm gonna go lightweight on this. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's the trail. Nice. We'll download the GPX. Okay, so to import a GPX, we gotta add a new layer. And import. Okay, there it is. Just gonna make it match. And I don't need all these labels. It's a pain in the butt. I don't need that. I don't need that. Castle Creek. So it looks like there's uh, water sources marked off here. It's pretty risky. You want to know what you're doing before you go out there to depend on these water sources. I'd probably want to be prepared. These things can, they vary on the time of year, I think. There's a campground there, that might be a good place to get water. Okay, so I'm just going to delete off all these, I don't need them. Fish Ford, campground, I don't care. Water resupply, ranger station, yeah, that's probably good. Okay, so I'm going to move the road up onto my layer here. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Got it. Move these labels. Oh, fuck. There we go. Come on. Okay, so I'm going to delete this layer. I don't need that anymore. So yeah, this is someone's GPS track, so it, it follows every little, every little turn he took is on this map. Every little place he went. <laughs>
we could we could clean it up actually you, you can't edit these I, I don't think I don't think there's a way to uh, no you can't really move it around like with this the one we made oh come on this is a pain in the butt to grab these okay got it with this we can move this around all these little points we can add new points we can make it longer um, if I really wanted to I could redraw this if I really wanted to it's up to you but anyways so we got uh, we got our whole route labeled out here and now uh, we want to put it onto our phone so we can go out there and uh, navigate. So I'm going to change the name Grand Junction 2. Okay. And we want to uh, export this to KML. We'll download this. And uh, you want to email this file to yourself. Okay, so I emailed the uh, route KMZ to myself, and I'm going to open it up on my phone here and copy it to the Gaia GPS. Uh, pretty happy with this app. It's worked pretty good for me. Um, but you can see the labels aren't showing up. I'm probably going to have to go into here. Show on map. Okay, yeah, there's all our grocery stores and everything. And uh, I'm going to need to download the maps for offline use. Uh, there we go. I want to drag a big rectangle around this whole thing. So if I ever hit a dead end, then I'll have all the, the whole map ready to go. No confusion. Um, but yeah, this... Uh, these maps, they show all the topographic information, they show all the peaks, um, they show a lot of hiking trails, water sources, so yeah, it's pretty good to have. And uh, if I ever hit a dead end, we're up here, this is where I was worried about. Uh, yeah, it doesn't show up at all on here. But yeah, if I had to, I could uh, create a route this is pretty cool. It's a little, it's a little tricky to grab the dot. Yeah. Okay. Then I, I, I can create a new route on the go. Save that. And I know exactly how far I'm gonna have to go on this uh, little detour. I also do that for hiking too, so I know how much of a trip it's gonna be. Yeah, any questions or anything, let me know.